Hello, everybody. I'm Tactical Jackalope, and you guessed it. I'm down in Austin hanging out with Ian. We had a great time uh, uh, over the last uh, 24 hours. And uh, since Ian's such an Anglophile, decided to bring along to me his new stag hound. It's really not that new, but you know, I brought it anyways. It's actually a repopped uh, Italeri kit, but it's, it's a pretty cool kit, so we're going to be taking a look at that. And I guess now is when you do that shit with the shield and the bang, bang, yeah, you know. All right, so let's take a quick look at the box and a typical cool to me a box art on the front. And notice it does call out that it is an uh, Italeri collaboration, so this uh, is Italeri plastic. Um, I don't think there's any Tamiya sprues in this at all, but uh, I think you guys are going to see this is a surprisingly detailed kit. I was very impressed with it. It's not cheap. Uh, I bought this from Tokyo Hobby, and it was even $32 from them, and I think they charged me like another 10 or 12 bucks to ship it, so this is a, a relatively expensive kit, but it's dated from 2008. Um, what else do we have on the side panels? You've got a photograph of the completed model, same box art on the side, and it says made in Italy. <laughs> it doesn't say made in the Philippines like most of the uh, Tamiya kits do. On this side panel, you see a picture of uh, Photo Etch. One of the things that's pretty cool with this kit, and uh, Ian actually was really impressed with this last night, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah is, uh, it comes with this cool little manual. It comes with a book, um, actually, with some really good reference photographs. And uh, we'll be taking a look at that as well. So let's go ahead and get a look at the plastic. Quit screwing around. That's all we do right here. That's yeah, right. We don't build nothing. Should we do, you want to look at the figures first? Yeah, let's look at those first. Okay. That figures. Detail's actually pretty crisp. Uh, facial expressions aren't bad. No flash in sight. It was a really cool looking Piat. You know what the Piat was? Mm -hmm. And a nice looking Sten. The Sten's actually beautiful. Can't complain. Um, these figures look pretty good. I know Ian looked at these yesterday and he was also pretty pleased with them. So, three figures with a kit. That's not bad, actually. Let's take, at the good, let's take a look at the good stuff. Let's look at the plastic. And there's not a ton of screws. I took the liberty of cutting the bags open earlier so we can. Uh, Shorten the time a little bit. So, and this is uh, in no certain order. So, so this is some of the best looking detail uh, I've seen from an Italeri kit. Now, of course, I haven't seen that many, but it's really quite good. Yeah. So, once again, you can see the casting numbers. Uh, really very pleased with the overall level of detail on these parts. So, let's go ahead and check out the next brew. And this next brew has all the fun stuff. Uh, we have the lower hull, fenders, upper hull. This is a surprisingly large armored car. You know that? I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, the whole piece is fairly simple. Um, no cast texture on it. The detail on it looks okay. The fenders look to be um, all right. They are a tad thick. I think that's to be expected for styrene. But they're a more or less in scale. There is some really nice fine grill texture on this top, this upper hole here. Uh, that looks good, in my opinion. These hatches look good with the handles on them, molded on. Can you, I don't know if you guys can see that okay. Overall, but I think you'll look, the plastic is completely free of flash. It's really a nice uh, looking kit. Here's the transaxles. They're nicely detailed as well. Pretty impressed, really. Okay, now that's awesome. I didn't know about this. Um, did you see this? All right. So these are bags, tarps that are rolled over the fender. Um, and look at the detail on that. Look at the fabric detail and the straps. That's Guys, that's pretty good. I mean, this is an Italeri kit. Here's a Browning 1919A4 air-cooled machine gun. The tire detail, um, they're done in styrene. They're not rubber. That's, that's also very nice. They're really nicely defined. There's some little fiddly parts, um, what Michael would call filigree. <laughs> Uh, on here, and they all look very crisp. I, guys, I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed so far. Just some of the texturing and uh, surfacing. Are you picking up the surface detail okay on that? Yeah, it looks really good. I'm actually pretty impressed. And uh, this is just a duplicate sprue of the same thing. Same thing with the tarps going over the fenders. That's really nice. I wonder if anybody makes a resin aftermarket set for this kit. Oh, the bug dog does. Okay. And it's a lot of stuff. So I had mentioned this in the review. Uh, that was it for the plastic, by the way, guys. So there's, as you can see, there's not a ton of plastics. It's not going to be a complicated kit. This is the little book I was talking about. So the Staghound Mark One Photographic Reference Manual, and it's pretty thick, actually. Uh, quite a few pages in this thing. There's, let's see, 
46 pages in total, which is a lot. So, um, of course, not wanting to violate any copyright laws, but let you see there's tons of photographic reference in this thing, uh, background information about the vehicle, um, line drawings of the interior and the radio compartment. Really, this is going to be a wonderful guide to help you in the build. Uh, not to mention, it's also going to help you uh, super detail this kit if you want. I'm sure there's uh, you know, aftermarket companies like Edward or Voyager that probably make photo etch sets for this kit that could really take it up to the next level. I would probably build it straight from the box just because that's me. But the um, only time I really add any details if I had maybe photo etch grills or something or a metal barrel. But as you can see, the photographic reference, this thing's just awesome. It's almost worth it alone just for the book. Um, now, I always, uh, as you guys know, usually do when I kit, when I look at a kit review, just wanted to take a, a cursory look at the instruction sheet so you know what you're up against. And these are not Italeri instructions, yay. These are indeed to me instructions, some of my favorite, and uh, it does not appear to be a complicated build. As usual and typical to me of fashion, we have uh, you know clear, you know, easy illustrated line drawings and not too many um, functions that you have to perform for step. Looks like a, really a pretty smooth build. I'm not going to run through each step with you. It goes all the way through 29 steps, really 28, if you include the um, accessories and equipment. But guys, I mean, as you can see, it's, it looks to be a pretty simple build. Not complicated at all. Oh, it does have a turret basket. It does, yeah, it does have the turret basket. I think that's a bonus. You might want to take a pin vise and drill out all those holes if you're, you know, that much of a nerd. But I have to admit, I don't know a lot about the Staghound. I don't know that much about British tanks, to be honest with you. More of a German tank guy, but it's not really a tank, though. No, it's not. It's an armored car. Yeah, yeah you're right. Like a recon car. And there is a simple photo etch fret. Um, it's. I will tell you though, the photo etch is really thick, well, super, super thick. Uh, that's kind of surprising. It's got some straps on it. Um, maybe what appears to be a toolbox. Maybe seat belts. The, uh, of course, the color callouts are always going to be in Tamiya, but the, there was a painting and marking guide. That, there were several versions offered for this vehicle. They must have put the uh, painting stuff in the little booklet. Yes, yeah, in the back of the book there. So there's uh, British Army 7th Armored Division in France, 1944. There's actually a really cool tri uh, bitonal camo version that's a Polish armored regiment. Polish 2nd Armored Corps, Italy, 1944, which is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, it's hard edge too. Um, there's an Australian Armored uh, Corps Squadron, BCOF, Japan, 1906, 1948. Oh, post-war. That's kind of cool. Uh, there's a Belgian unit. Some of these are post-war. There's one here. There's an Italian, actual Italian Army from 1950. Wow. There's a, so there's about five or six options there. Um, in terms of what they've included uh, for decal options, but so guys, um, I really have to say that I'm, I'm overall I'm pretty impressed with the kit. I think the level of detail is excellent. Uh, it is a bit pricey. This kit in the U.S. runs 50, 60 bucks, which is not cheap. Um, the photographic reference manual, the book, I think is a bonus. But the moldings look crisp. I didn't see any flash, so I got to give it a thumbs up. I, just, I certainly recommend it. I think pretty much modeler of any skill level can build this kit. So. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you have a great week, and thanks for watching that 135th scale show. Wait, 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 wait. Andrew, thank you so much for coming down to Austin, hanging out. It's been badass, but before I let you go back to Dallas, you have to challenge me in a sport that I am actually an unprofessional in. Okay. And that's a staring contest. Are you ready for that? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Turn your chair. Let's make this uh, uh, back up a little bit if you can. I don't know how much room we got there. You're going to sit straight up. All right. Right here.